Welcome back, boys and girls. So today is a new story. It's actually a special type of story. It's called a folk tale. Now, a folk tale is a story that's been passed on from generations and generations. So basically, it means that long ago you had a group of people, and they would tell that their that story to their children, and then their children would tell that story to their children and just pass on the story over and over again. And also, not only is this a folk tale, so a story that was passed on from generations, but also it's a fiction story. So a fiction story is a story that is not real. It's not a true story. It's made up. Okay. So the name of our folk tale today is called "All Stories Are Anansi's," and Anansi is our main character. The people or the animals of the story. So let's find out what this story is about. A Nancy overlooking the village. Long ago, there were no stories on Earth. It was believed that all stories belonged to the sky god, Nyanu, who kept the stories in a box beneath his throne. Because they had no stories to share. The people of the earth just sat around their campfires. One day, looking down from his web, Anansi the spider could see that people were restless and bored. Anansi decided he would bring them something that would make them happy, and would help pass the time. Hmm, what do you think he's going to give the people? So just to recap. Anansi is this spider right here. He's our character, and we also learned that all the stories belong to the sky god Niame, and the sky god kept the stories in a box beneath his throne. So, what do you think Anansi is going to do? He sees this group of people over here, and there's nothing to do. What do you think he's going to do? Keep that prediction or guess in your mind, and let's see if we it happens. Okay. Anansi stretched his eight legs and wove a wonderful web that reached all the way to the sky. He climbed up the web until he arrived at the throne of the sky god Niame, the keeper of all stories. So where did Niame, the sky god, keep all the stories under what? Called out. That's right, under his throne. Oops, trying to turn the page. Here we go. Niame, he said, wise one, great god of the sky. Will you let me have the great box where you keep the stories? I would like to take the stories to the people who live on the earth. I will give you the box of stories," said Niama in a booming voice. "But the price is high. You must bring me three things: Oni, the great python, who can swallow a goat. So a python is a snake." So that's one of the things he wants. He wants Oni, who is the great python. Osabe, the mighty leopard, whose teeth are as sharp as spears. So ready? He wants the great python, which is also a snake, and the snake can swallow a goat. He also wants. The mighty leopard, whose teeth are sharp as spears, so spears are like pointy weapons that were used. And then finally, here's the third thing. And Moboro, the hornet, whose sting burns like a needle of fire. So let's recap the three things that Niame, the sky god, wants. Okay, he wants first. He wants the python. That can swallow a goat, and remember, a python is a snake. You know what? Let me just pull up a picture right now. Let's pull up a picture of a python. So this right here 
is a python. It's a really, really big snake, okay? The second thing he wants is the leopard, right? Whose teeth are as sharp as spears. So you know what, since we're here, let's look at a picture of a leopard. So this is a leopard. And finally, he wants the hornet, right? The hornet whose sting burns like the needle of fire. So here is a hornet. A hornet is basically, it's kind of like a bee. Whoops, that's a hornet. Hornet. There we go. This is a hornet. Okay, so it looks like a bee, but it's bigger. So here's a regular bee, I think, and then here's a hornet. All right. So those are the three things he asked a Nazi to get in order to get the stories, right, to the people. I will pay the price, said a Nazi. A Nazi swung back down to the earth on his web. He went to speak with his wife. Awesome. Together, they crafted a plan to capture Onini, the great python who could swallow a goat. So Onini is the first thing he asked for, right? The python that could swallow a goat. So let's see what his plan is. The next morning, Anansi sneakily walked into the forest, waving a big branch and talking to himself. She's wrong he said, pretending to be upset. I know she is. He is much longer than this branch. As the Nancy approached or got closer to the watering hole, a large snake rose up. It was Onini, the great python who could swallow a goat. What are you mummering ab muttering about? Anansi asked Onini. You're disturbing my nap. I've been quarreling with my wife. So quarreling means he's disagreeing, said Anansi. She says that you are shorter than this branch, but I say that you are longer. She will not listen to me, and I do not see how I can prove that I am right. That's easy, said Onini. Lay your branch on the ground, and I will lie next to it. Then you shall see that I am longer. The great snake slithered over and lay next to Anansi's branch. Hmm, do you guys think this is his plan to kind of capture to Oni? Let's see. It looks like you may be longer, said Anansi, Anansi still questioning. But I can't tell for sure because you're not, you're not quite straightened out. Could I straighten you out a bit? Certainly, said Onini. Let me fasten your tail at the ends, said Anansi Anun 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 as he worked. That way I can really straighten you out. And also here a little lower, and here up by your head. Before the python realized what was happening, Anansi spun a web and used it to tie Onini to the branch. Now you are caught, said Anansi. With that, Anansi carried Onini the python to Niame. That is one thing, said Niame in a loud, deep voice. Two things remain. With that, Anansi carried Onini the Oh, whoops, sorry, reread that. Anansi went back to Earth and began to strategize or plan his next move to capture Osebu. Osebu. The mighty leopard with teeth as sharp as spears. So he caught the python. What two animals are left? Who remembers? What two animals? Call it out. Mm-hmm. The leopard and the hornet. Nice job. All right. Let's see how he's going to capture the leopard. Oh, Sabo. Oh, whoops. He dug a deep hole on the path of Osebu. 
on the path Osebo used to get the watering hole. He laid branches across the hole and covered the branches with sticks and leaves and dirt. When Anansi was satisfied that the hole was very well hidden, he scurried home and went to sleep. So it seems that Anansi made some sort of hole, right? And he covered it with leaves and dirt and sticks so it doesn't look like there's a hole there. What do you think is going to happen? How is he going to capture the leopard? How is this hole going to capture the leopard? What do you think? You call it out right now, right? And then let's see if you are correct when we get to that part. Leopard in the hole. When Osebo came out to hunt during the night, he fell right into Anansi's trap. Anansi found him down in the hole next the next morning. Osebo, said Anansi, what are you doing down in that hole? You fool, said Osebo, can't you see that I've fallen into this trap? You must help me get out. Anansi found a large willow tree and bent the top of the tree over the pit. He spun two silky cords and used them to fasten the tree. Then he spun another silky cord and attached it to the top of the tree. The third cord dangled into the pit. Tie the cord around your tail, said Anansi. Then I will lift you up. So if you notice, here's a tree right here. 